Hello and welcome to Prime at 9. I'm Naomi Kigon. Now the news in detail. Frontal organizations representing the eastern regions of Nagaland have decided to not participate in any electoral process at the state or the central levels until a separate state, Frontier Nagaland, is fulfilled. A press release from the Eastern Nagaland People's Organization reviewed here on Saturday informed about a meeting with leaders of the region had on August 26 in Timapur. The seven tribal bodies are to mobilize the grassroots for the success of the move. Another resolution they took was to appeal to the NSC and KYA to maintain peace and do not disturb peace in any manner within the eastern regions. The community organizations are to ensure that this appeal is respected and adhered to. The public of the eastern region shall take a stand if this appeal is not honored, it stated. The statement also resolved to ask Wanching village to pursue for obtaining a NOC from neighboring Ao villages for merger of Anaki Pom village under Longlang district from Mogokchung district. The statement added that it has resolved to constitute a committee to study and recommend suggestions for resolving issues relating to Eastern Sumis at the earliest. earliest. Nagaland's Chief Minister Nipirio on Friday declared NTPB tickets for three Dimapur constituencies while stating that the party have already committed to give tickets to sitting MLAs for the upcoming 2023 Assembly election. The said tickets were declared for sitting MLAs Moadoshi for Dimapur 2, Ajido Jimomi for Dimapur 3 and Zale Rio for Kaspani 2. The Chief Minister, while speaking at the inaugural program of the party's Timopo Region Office, said that the seat-sharing formula with BJP on the basis of 4020 has the support of the central BJP leaders, including Home Minister Amit Shah and BJP National President J.B. Nada, and affirmed that the alliance was firm. Regarding Dimapur constituencies, Rio said that Dimapur areas and town were important constituencies. However, the party did not have representative last election, but with Moadoshi Longkumar and Ajedo Jimomi joining, the party's position has been strengthened. A group of volunteers and well-wishers residing along the stretch of road from the Artang Baptist Church Pastors Residence to Siwa Gate Junction have been repairing the road for the past two days. Along with voluntary labor, the group has also been pressing machinery to construct a concrete road approximately one and a half kilometers that connect two important education institutions at Artang Ward. The volunteers started the road repairing work by collecting contributions from among themselves, they added. During interactions, the volunteers said the road was last repaired about eight years ago and that the road had been in deplorable condition. They informed that in April 2021, they approached the department in concern where they learned that repairs would commence by August, but there had been no news about it so far. <laughs>
so far, the volunteers have uploaded 15 dumber loads of boulders and other materials, while two backhoe excavators have been pressed into action. They plan to use road rollers to compact soil and gravel level the road and construct a concrete road in the coming days. About 150 residents have contributed both monetary assistance and in, in kind to construct the road. Amid a looming political crisis in Charkand, two buses carrying MLAs of the ruling coalition left the residence of Chief Minister Hemant Soren in Ranchi on Saturday. The decision to move the legislators was taken after a United Progressive Alliance meeting following reports that CM Soren could be disqualified as an MLA. Preparations have been made to shift ruling coalition MLAs to one of the friendly states like West Bengal or Chhattisgarh if the need arises to prevent co poaching attempts by the BJP. The ruling coalition has 49 MLAs in the 81 member assembly. The JMM, as the largest party, has 30 MLAs, the Congress 18 legislators and the RJD1. The BJP has 26 MLAs in the House. Faced with the threat of Chargand CM Hemant Soren being disqualified as MLA, a crucial meeting of the UBA was held at the CM's residence on Friday to chalk out a strategy. In the rapidly changing political scenario, resort politics could come into play to keep the numbers intact, sources said. A court in Goa on Saturday granted a 10-day police custody of Sutir Sangwan and Sugwinder Singh, the two accused persons arrested in the murder case of BJP leader and actress Sonali Pokat. They were produced before the court in Mabusa in the Anjuna police. While Sangwan Pokat's personal assistant and Singh were arrested on Friday, two others, the owner of the Curly's restaurant in Anjuna and a drug dealer were detained on Saturday. Sources said that the police have questioned cab drivers which were hired by the Sangwan and Pokat during their visit to the restaurant and to other places in Anjuna.
After their arrest on Friday, Inspector General of Police Omvir Singh Bishnoi said that someone has confessed to the crime, stating that after reaching Goa, he along with Singh took Pogat to Curly's on the pretext of botting and he mixed some obnoxious substance in drinking water and forced the victim to drink it. China's claim over India's Arunachal Pradesh, which the communist nation calls Southern Tibet, is nothing new. China is once again flexing close to the Indian border. An incident has been caught on camera showing the Chinese People's Liberation Army reportedly carrying out construction activities in Chaglagam, Arunachal Pradesh, near the line of actual control. According to the sources, the video was captured by the locals in the Anjou district of Arunachal Pradesh that showed the PLA along with heavy machinery taking up illegal construction work near Hadigara Delta 6 in Chaglagam. Sources say that it takes about four days for a common man just to reach the spot where the PLA soldiers were been doing construction activities. Chaglam is India's last administrative post near the India-China border, LSE. The video was reportedly recorded on August 11, 2022 and was circulated on social media. Meanwhile, the Narendra Modi-led Union government faced criticism over the incident from the opposition. India and China have been engaged in a border standoff in the northern Ladakh sector of LSE since 2020. According to several media reports, China had illegally captured 60 square kilometers of Indian patrolled territory between May and June 2020. The governor of Meghalaya, Satya Bal Malik, has conferred the Governor's Award for Excellence in Public Service 2022 on Mahabubul Hok, Chancellor of the University of Science and Technology Meghalaya, for his pioneering and outstanding contribution in the field of higher and technical education. By the Honorable President of India was a proud moment for Meghalaya. It has established Meghalaya as a leading state in organic farming of Sri Mahmoud Hak. The awe-inspiring and wonderful infrastructure that USP and Meghalaya boasts of could not have been possible without the guidance and vision of Sri Hak. The achievements of two of the leading luminaries of our state who have dedicated their life to selfless public service and upliftment of social economic conditions of the rural and poor in our state. As we celebrate Ajadi Kamrit Mahotsav, commemorating 75 years of independence of our nation and 50 glorious years of statehood of Meghalaya, we cannot but look back and observe that this has been achieved in a big way on account of the dedication, devotion and the relentless hard work of some individuals and personalities. The conferment of the awards by the governor was held on Friday at the Rajpavan in Shillong. Trinity Sayo, a school teacher who led a silent revolution mobilizing more than 800 rural women to set up self-help groups for growing turmeric through organic farming methods, also received the governor's excellence award. Floral tributes were paid to four martyrs, namely O. Nabagumar and Pramotini, W. Nila Amani and N. Chao Bahal on the occasion of 57th Hunger Martyrs Day observation in Manipur on Saturday. The observation is held every year on the 27th of August. The Hunger Martyrs Day rally was organized by the All Manipur Students' Union in remembrance of the four martyrs who laid down their lives for Manipur in the movement against artificial famine in 1965. Several students came out in traditional attire to join the rally, which started from Pisum Chingmacha Students' Memorial Complex in Fall West. The rally culminated at DM University campus in Fall West. <laughs>
Sikkim Chief Minister Prem Singh Tamang congratulates Sitat Yonzon, principal of Eglavia Model Residential School, Kelsing District, and Mala Jigdal Dorji, principal of Modern SSS Kangdok, on their being nominated for the National Awards for Teachers 2022. This year, two teachers from Sikkim have been selected for the prestigious award, which will be presented by the President of India on September 5, 2022, in New Delhi. A press release from Chief Minister's office wished the achievers the best. World football governing body FIFA on Friday lifted the ban imposed on the AIFF after the Supreme Court terminated the mandate of the Committee of Administrators, clearing the decks for India to host the Women's Under-17 World Cup in October. FIFA had suspended the AIFF on August 15 for undue influence from third parties and had said the Under-17 Women's World Cup cannot currently be held in India as planned. The suspension, the first time in AIFF's 85-year history, lasted just 11 days after the Supreme Court on Monday dissolved the three-member COA constituted by it in May, while modifying its earlier orders to ensure that India hosts the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup from October 11 to 30. The FIFA said the decision was taken after FIFA received confirmation that the mandate of the Committee of Administrators that was set up to assume the powers of the AIFF Executive Committee had been terminated and that the AIFF administration had regained full control of the AIFF's daily affairs. As a consequence, the FIFA Under-17 Women's World Cup 2022, scheduled to take place on 11 to 30 October 2022 will be held in India as planned. FIFA said it and the AFC will continue to monitor the situation and will support the AIFF in conducting its elections in a timely manner. Sports Minister Anurag Tagore termed the lifting of ban as a victory for the game. Adding another feature to his cap, Tokyo Olympics gold medalist Niraj Chopra on August 26 clinched the Lausanne Diamond League title. Niraj finished first after registering after a best javelin throw of 89.8 meter throw. He couldn't better his throw in the second attempt, registering a distance of 85.18 meter. He skipped his third and fifth attempts before registering throws of 80.4 in his final attempt. Niraj has thus qualified for the Diamond League Finals, which will take place in Zurich, Switzerland from September 7 and 8. He has also now qualified for the 2023 World Championships. Supertax illegal twin tower in Noida will be demolished on August 28 and have been charged with 3,500 kgs of explosives. The towers, which are taller than Delhi's Kudab Minar, will become India's highest structures ever to be demolished. The builders on the Supreme Court orders will be demolishing the 32-story twin towers on their own expense. But what led to the demolition of the ambitious Supertech twin towers? Will flat buyers be refunded? Let's have a look. According to reports, the Noida Authority was complicit in sanctioning the building plan. Initially, the plan was to build 14 towers, which of nine floors. Later, around 2012, the new plan suggested twin towers with a height of 40 floors. As observed by the Supreme Court, the twin towers are in violation of several building codes. Supertech ran into trouble when Residents' Welfare Association of the Society approached the Allahabad High Court claiming issues with the construction. In 2014, the Allahabad High Court had ordered the builders to demolish the twin towers and refund the buyer's payment. This order was subsequently held up by the Supreme Court in 2021. The Supreme Court had assured home buyers that they will receive a full refund of the amount deposited with the builder. The Apex Court also asked the interim resolution professional of the firm facing insolvency proceedings to deposit rupees 1 crore with the Apex Court registry. 
The demolition would be done through a controlled imposing technique for which over 3,700 kg of explosive will be used in the eye-popping event that would also leave behind a whooping 55 tons of debris to be managed. Mumbai-based Edific Engineering, along with their South African partner firm, Jet Demolitions is carrying out the job, which is certain to make it into civil engineering feats of the world. That's all we have for now. For more news, keep watching on Mail TV.